Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning virtual service. My name is Reverend James Parker. It's just such a pleasure to be here with you today and a wonderful time for us to come into a moment of oneness with spirit. Well, let's get started with our daily word. And our daily word for today is world peace. And it says, I am a peaceful presence to all. Peace in the world begins with me. I consider it a sacred responsibility to respond to all people and circumstances peacefully. I forgive myself for those moments I am less than peaceful and quickly return to the peace of God in my heart. I am a living expression of God, just as all people are. My tranquil bearing inspires peacefulness wherever I go and with everyone I meet. Each day, I join like-minded people everywhere in a renewed commitment to be a presence of peace. I give thanks that as each of us communicates God's love in our unique ways, peace and harmony are established in individuals, families, communities, and among nations throughout the world. And the scripture comes from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 11. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Let us take a moment and go into the silence and allow ourselves to meditate on a moment of peace. And so it is. Good morning. Welcome to our virtual service. My name is James Parker. Thank you for being here. Well, let's get started. My lesson title today is Making Peace with the Past. Friends, who you are and the power you are are amazing. Who you are and the power you are are incredible. This is the truth, the spiritual truth of you. But we don't always feel it and, and or express it, do we? One of those reasons could be that we let shadows from the past, the hurts and wounds from others, or our own missteps and errors haunt us in the present preventing us from engaging, embracing, and empowering our lives. It's high time we reconcile with the past. In this manner, we make peace with it and release it once and for all. Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore in his book Talks on Truth wrote, If you are obedient to spirit, you will not suffer these burdens to be loaded upon you. You will live in the present, do your highest duty every day, forget the past, and let the future take care of itself. Fillmore's emphasis is this, whatever we have in our consciousness, thoughts, feelings, beliefs, values, attitudes, words, actions, and reactions, 
we experience in our own lives. So the question becomes, are there painful or unhealed aspects of your past hanging around your consciousness and affecting your present and your future? If left unhealed, your past can destroy your present and it can wreak havoc with your future. It can bury your gifts, your creativity, your talents, your love, and your power. Have you ever seen a mime try to get out of a box? That's what an unhealed past can be for us. It can be like a box that we were put in a long time ago, and although the walls haven't been there for years, we still struggle against them. Yes, dragging our past around can be a struggle. So making peace with your past, reconciling it so that it no longer is a creative energy in your life is essential to having a life unburdened by hurt, pain, difficulties, and challenges stored in your mind, heart, and subconscious. Friends, we all have unintended reminders of past failures. The times we thought we had something wonderful and it fell apart. The times we tried our best and it didn't measure up or the times something unexpected foiled our plans completely. You can learn from the past, but don't dwell there. It's an easy way to distract from the present. And refusing to dwell on the past isn't about ignoring the things that happened. Instead, recognize the emotional toll that dwelling on something is taking on you. And then give yourself permission to move forward. Here are two ways to make peace with your past. Number one, change your perception of your past. To change your perception of the past, a certain realization is required. Now listen closely. You cannot change your past. Let me repeat that. You cannot change your past. Yes, all your wishing, hoping, hand-wringing, arguing, righteous indignation, foot stomping, and angry tantrums, no matter how justified they may be, will do nothing to change the past, but will do everything to keep you bound to it. And although you cannot change your past, you can, in fact, do something very, very powerful. You can change your perception of it. Because it is only your perception of the past that has power over you anyway. We really do interpret everything in life. And the situations or experiences that happen really have no meaning other than the meaning we give them. We can choose interpretations that empower our lives and move them forward or interpretations that leave us feeling alone, frustrated, anxious, or helpless. There was a young man who had become a paraplegic and then through a freak accident, he became a quadriplegic. Someone asked him one day, doesn't your physical condition color the way you look at life? His response was, yes, I suppose it does, but I get to choose the color. You too get to choose the color of your past. So this first suggestion is, why not make up a new story, a new interpretation about it? Inventing a new interpretation is the simplest way to make peace with the past. By giving up the idea that our story is the truth, by letting go of our interpretation of what happened, we can reconcile it. Maybe someone teased you as a child. Perhaps you were deeply wounded physically or verbally by a loved one. Perhaps somewhere in your life you picked up on a flaw introduced to you by another. Perhaps someone has deeply frustrated or angered you to the point that you gave your power away to them. For instance, thinking you're not good enough or smart enough or pretty enough or that you are not deserving of love because someone told you you weren't. Maybe you've become angry with someone and instead of working through the experience, you hold on to the feeling. Blame that person for your discomfort and inevitably, give that person your power, which most assuredly they don't want. I mean, how many times has the story in your head or the interpretation of some event you created in your consciousness 
held you in bondage and kept you from truly and lovingly advancing mentally, physically, emotionally, or spiritually. It's up to you to change your interpretation, to get out of your head, let go of the past, and come into a beautiful and very attractive time of peace. However intense or trivial, sit down and write out alternative interpretations. And if you can't think of any, enlist the help of a friend or of one of our prayer chaplains. And here are the important, the important questions. Does this interpretation of my past empower me or disempower me? Does this interpretation make me feel weak or strong? If you have an inner dialogue that disempowers you, that makes you feel weak, angry, or limited in any way, it won't change until you yourself replace it with a positive, powerful, internal conversation. Choosing a new interpretation neutralizes the negative vibration. So that's the first suggestion for making peace with the past. The second one is to look for, look for the good. All seemingly negative events are a blessing in disguise. Some of us choose to live under the illusion that bad things happen for no good reason. But pain has a purpose. It teaches us and guides us to higher levels of awareness. Our past is a blessing that guides and teaches, so look for the good in it. My past is a blessing that guides and teaches me. Your past is a, is a blessing that guides and teaches you. Simply put, bless your past and your pain. Whatever you bless surrounds that person or thing with spiritual energy and transforms it into a gift or a goodness. Someone once said, everything that is past is either a learning experience to grow on, a beautiful memory to reflect on, or a motivating factor to act upon. It is important to understand that everything happening in the world is as it should be at every moment. There are no mistakes. There are no accidents or coincidences. Friends, this is how we make peace with the past so that we can empower our lives today. We give it a new interpretation and we look for the good. Charles Fillmore in Adam Smashing Power of Mind said, do not look at what has been. Lot's wife tried that and she never got beyond the past. The truth is, if you are unable to let go of your past, you'll struggle to give the future the attention it deserves, and you'll miss out on the joy of living in the present. Let's face it, our past plays a huge role in who we are and what we want. Affirm today, there is nothing arising out of the past that can disturb me. The past, the present, and the future are one unbroken stream of good. I now loose all thoughts in the past that have caused me anxiety. Hmm. Buddha said, in the end, only three things matter. How much you loved, how gently you lived, and how gracefully you let go of the things that are not meant for you. Friends, letting go of the past is one of the hardest things to do. Yet it is often the best decision we can make because your past plays a much bigger role in your present than you may even realize. And everyone has things in the past that they'd rather forget or change. Honestly, we all go through learning experiences that help us become happier humans, but we can also be left traumatized by losses, injustices, and regrets. But making peace with your past will help you move forward and not only learn from those experiences, but utilize that knowledge to help you live your best life. Your vision of the future should be about who you want to become, not who you used to be. So while you can reflect on the past enough to learn from it, make sure to take the time to do the work so you're able to let go of whatever guilt, shame, heartbreak, or trauma is holding you back from moving forward. Just for today, Give your thoughts of things that have already happened a new interpretation and then look for the good in them. If you do, your life will be changed and who you are and the power you are 
will come forth in amazing and incredible ways. Friends, are you willing to make peace with your past with me today? Well, thank you all and God bless you. Well, we've come to that time in our service where we open our hearts to give. And this is an opportunity. This is a gift, a chance to come forth in more prosperous ways. Now, there are three ways that you can give. You can go to our website at unichicago.org and hit the contribute button. Or you can text us at 773-492-8772. Or always mail us a check to 2650 West Montrose, Suite 110, Chicago, Illinois, 60618. Now I ask that you take that gift and send energy from your heart into that gift and let us say our offertory blessing together. Divine love, richly flowing through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am grateful for the blessings of this day. I am grateful for the blessings on the way. And so it is. Friends, if you prayed that prayer with us, you're moving energy. You are moving substance. Now is your time. Open the way. Open your heart. Open your mind. Get ready to claim your gift. It's on its way. Now let's take a moment and pray it into existence. Heavenly Mother, Father, everything God, thank you for these gifts we received today. We know they come from those who love you and who are open and receptive to doing your will. God, take these gifts and use them out in the world in any way you see fit to make the world a better place and then return that gift to the giver. Press down, shaken together and running over. Fill their bank accounts, fill their wallets. Open the way for them to have love and light in their homes and their families. Now, God, move upon us. Guide us, direct us. More of you, God, less of me. More of you, God, less of me. More of you, God, less of me. And we see it all working now in the name and the very nature of Jesus the Christ. And so it is. Amen. Well, friends, thank you for being here with us this week. If you're new to our service, welcome to our home. Welcome to our family. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. Please come back. And if you like what you see, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Ring the bell. That way, it helps us to bring our message to more people. And if you're going through something, if you're having a struggle or a problem in your life, go to our website. Check out some of our, our messages, some of our meditations. Find something there that will uplift and inspire you. And I ask you to stick around and take a look at our announcements. Find some opportunities, some possibilities there that might serve you. And now I ask that you become steel. And let us say our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Well, friends, thank you for being here with us this week. We love you. Hope to see you next week. See you then. Bye now.